So, remember when I said Xylanin will not be a strong character? Yes, I don't remember either. Basically, in my previous video, I am now getting comments that this video aged poorly because I said you should not trust leaks. The thing is, I never wanted this video to age good. Because if it does, it means the pre-release leaks were true. But if you will watch the video now, you will get a general idea of how off the chart those leakers were. Now, were they entirely wrong about her kit? No. But still, her kit turned out nothing like I said in this video. And that's what I wanted. And I said that in my video as well. Just to let you guys know that at this point, we are just speculating. There is no certainty. I hope Xylanin turns out even stronger than we think. So I am happy that this video aged poorly. All right, everyone, Maharb is here. And with each upcoming region, we are going up with a constant streak of power creeping, whether it is from a DPS standpoint or from support standpoint. We have Mondstadt characters that are not as good compared to other nations. Liyue characters are an exception because it's China. So the characters will always be overpowered. So we don't talk about that. But Inazuma gave us some really solid characters like Kazaha and Ayako, etc. And then Fontaine characters were absolute powerhouses. And now Natlon is directly competing with Fontaine in terms of power level. What? I forgot Samaro? Shut up. No one talks about that stupid region of reverse power creep. Anyways, the point is, with the release of Xylanin's kit, it is certain that Genshin devs are not racist. They just had some personal grudge against Deya. And if they will ever need to create a character with fucked up kit, it will be from Samaru. Natlon characters are only going to be better and better as time passes. Now before letting you know why Xylanin's kit is absolutely cracked and why she is insanely overpowered, let me explain her kit as briefly as possible. Her normal attacks are standard and they scale with attack, but her plunging attack scales with defense. And when she is in her Night Sowl's Blessing state by casting Elemental Skill, her normal attacks will convert into Geo Damage and scale with defense. It's a pretty standard on Field Damage Dealer role right? And that's the interesting part. She is a damage dealer as well as a support, depending on how you want to use her. So I will be letting you know about both parts of her kit individually, so you don't get confused. First, we will start with her off-field support capabilities, since most of the community is focused on that. Xylanin has three samplers that can generate different soundscapes based on her other party members' elemental types, decreasing nearby opponents' corresponding elemental resistance when activated. Meaning if your party has Pyro, Hydro, Cryo, or Electro characters. These samplers will shine with the corresponding elemental types, resulting in the decrease of opponent's elemental resistance to those particular elements for 15 seconds. But if there are Dendro, Enemo, or Geo party members, then the samplers will shine with Geo. Secondly, if you have two characters of the same element, only one sampler will shine with the element. Just something I wanted to clear. To activate these samplers, you need 90 Night Soul points. But how to get these Night Soul points? While in her Night Soul Blessing state, by casting her elemental skill, she will automatically gain 45 Night Soul points. Now, if at least two of her samplers have undergone elemental conversion, meaning if you have at least two characters of different elements in the party, she will gain 35 Night Soul points after hitting an enemy in her Night Soul's Blessing state from her passive. So all you need to do is cast elemental skill and hit an enemy, and you will get 90 Night Soul points and get 36% Elemental Resistance Shred on skill level 10 for all your party members, which is amazing. With her Elemental Burst, she will deal AoE Geo damage. And if at least two of her samplers have undergone Elemental Conversion, she will heal the active character based on her defense. Which means she is a sustain as well, so you don't need any other healer in the party, and you can use another offensive option there. Her buffs are easy to set up, and you don't have to keep applying buffs to enemies individually. The recent Natlon artifact set, Scroll of the Hero of Cinder City is basically viridescent veneerer for Natlon characters. All in all, she is shaping up to be an amazing replacement to Kazaha in so many situations. But is she better than Kazaha? Well, the answer in my opinion is yes and no at the same time. You see, the biggest drawback of Xylanin is her element Geo. Kazaha is Enemo and have way more uses when it comes to dealing with different enemy shields or using one element to provide additional damage to another element. Silent and being Geo will feel way less impactful against the kinds of enemies who have any kind of shielding capabilities. Secondly, if you are using Xylanin as a support, she will not be providing any off-field damage or elemental application. So, basically there will be not much of a damage contribution on her part. And her contribution for the team will not include a lot of crystallized shields, which is not necessarily a bad thing since crystallized shields are already useless to begin with. But I just wanted to point that out since they still act as a somewhat reliable means for interruption resistance. 
Kazaha, on the other hand, provides off-field elemental damage, and your on-field character can use it for elemental reactions. So that point also goes in his favor. But since Xylanin provides healing, so you can slot an offensive character in the place of a healer, I think that's a huge W for Xylanin. So we can't really say if Kazaha or Xylanin are entirely power creeping each other. And you can use both of them in the same team as well, so that's also something worth considering. With that being said, there is another part of her kit we should know about. The DPS part. You see, if less than two of her samplers have undergone elemental conversion, meaning if you don't have at least two characters of different elements in the party, or only one or no party members of any of these elements, then after hitting the enemy, Xylanin's personal damage will be increased by 30% so she will be able to deal more damage while on field. Additionally, with her Elemental Burst, if her samplers have less than two Elemental Conversions, instead of providing healing, she will deal two additional beats of Geo damage. Meaning she can be a DPS as well as a support depending on how many party members you have in your team with different elements. Now because the scaling of her damage output is all based on her defense, she can work really well with characters like Chiori, Albedo, Goru, etc. basically replacing Ido in mono Geo compositions. Geo Resonance will further increase her damage. Natlin's craftable weapon, Flute of His Pitzel, will be her great weapon option regardless of if you want to use her as a support or a DPS. In recent Natlon artifact set, Obsidian Codex is basically Marisha Sea Hunter for Natlon characters, so this works amazingly for a damage dealing Xylanin. But will she be better than Ido in Mono Geo? Well, the answer in my opinion is yes and no at the same time. I wouldn't say she will be straight up better than Ido because her damage scaling don't seem as high as Ido to me. But still, since Ido uses his elemental burst while Xylanin infuses herself with elemental skill, this is a massive quality of life. I have always been against energy management when it comes to open world exploration. Combined with her movement and climbing utility, I'd say she is a pretty safe and comfortable pick for using instead of Arataki Ido. As for her cons, she don't create any Geo constructs, so Chiori won't be able to utilize her full potential at C0 with Xylanin as opposed to Ido because Yushi is considered a Geo construct. But if you have C1 Chiori like me, then what are you waiting for? Enjoy but kicking with Xylanin and Chiori duo. If we talk about Xylanin's constellations, C1 increases active character's interruption resistance and increases her Night Soul points by 45 and decreases its consumption by 30%, basically increasing the damage as well as the duration of her skill, if I understand correctly. So it is huge. C2 buffs all party members based on elemental conversions of her soundscapes. Geo increases crit rate by 30%, Pyro increases attack by 40%, Hydro increases max HP by 40%, Cryo increases crit damage by 50%, and Electro restores 20 energy and decreases cooldown of elemental burst by 5 seconds. This is an insane constellation, but I still think Cryo should increase crit rate and Geo should increase crit damage. It will make sense with how Genshin's elemental effects work. C3 and C5 is skill and burst level increase which is standard. With her C4, after Xylanin uses her elemental skill, she will increase all party members' normal, charged, and plunging attack damage based on 65% of Xylanin's defense that will last for 15 seconds or for 6 hits on an opponent. When you hit more than one opponent, trigger counts will be consumed based on the number of opponents hit. The counts for each party member are counted independently. In my opinion, since you can only use it for 6 attacks, I don't think it's that big of a boost. But for a character that can do massive front load damage, like Arlecchino or Navia, this can help a lot, I think. And with her C6, she will basically deal increased normal and plunging attack damage for 5 seconds without consuming any Night Soul points once every 15 seconds. Basically increasing the duration of her skill, as well as dealing a large chunk of front load damage. Pretty good constellation, actually. But her C1 and C2 are way more impactful for her kid in my opinion. Based on what I am seeing right now, if you ask me to choose between Kazaha and Xylanin for a support and damage buffer, I will most certainly choose Xylanin any time of the day because number one, she is gorgeous as heaven, and number two, she provides healing, and I love healers while roaming in the open world. And if I were to choose between Ido and Xylanin for DPS, I will obviously choose Xylanin because number one, she is gorgeous as heaven, and number two, she don't need energy management in the open world and is easy to play. And being able to top both, a support and a DPS at the same time, that's a pretty big deal in my opinion. But what do you guys think? It's not like she is perfect and flawless. No character is perfect and flawless except Layla. But she is still looking really amazing. Note that this is still very early beta information. 
and things can change pretty drastically. So take it as a grain of salt and do what Layla says. Hi, I am Muharib's wife, Layla. My husband would be very happy if you leave a like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to join our Discord server and he will see you in the comments section. Peace!